Mike Criswell, welcome to the Norman Church of Christ. Thanks. I look forward to being here. Um, of course, COVID has thrown things in the loop, but uh, it's been great to be here so far. Well, we're looking forward to the week with you. What are some of the topics you have in mind to cover as we go through our visitors? Well, as I've gotten to kind of look over the congregation and see the young people, I, I want to cover some of the things that deal with worldview and maybe just some uh, background material for some of the things that we believe and um, hopefully some things that will spark interest, maybe a parable or two also. That'd be great. Yeah. What are some of the favorite topics and stories that you like to preach on as you preach around? Well, this morning we dealt with, uh, you know, Peter's confession in Matthew 16, and, and I love that story there. That's one of my favorites because having been to Israel and looked at that site, and then, of course, just the text is so rich. But, uh, you know, I, I love to teach on the epistles. I think the Apostle Paul's epistles, like Ephesians and Philippians, are just so encouraging. So I like to teach on those. That's great. Yeah. So you mentioned COVID. That's been quite a challenge. So as we went through that particular challenge, what were some verses or a verse maybe that was a source of encouragement to you? Well, you know, the book of Philippians in general is a, uh, a very encouraging book. I mean, Paul didn't have COVID, but he was in prison. And so, uh, you know, he said the gospel is not chained. And uh, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens, strengthens me. So, you know, really COVID was a bump in the road, but for the most part, I think we all carried on. We all studied our Bibles. We all had studies with others. And so, um, you know, COVID was, was difficult, but we moved through. Yeah. Philippians is a great one. There is a lot of optimism. Yeah. There, even in difficult times. What about a kind of a random fact about the Bible that maybe wouldn't be commonly known? Something that comes to your mind? Boy, that is a tough one. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> This may be more humorous, but there is that account in the Gospel of Mark where the young man in the garden flees uh, naked. And most scholars believe that's John Mark himself. Yeah. Now, whether that's true, that is a, a, a little known fact. I think uh, if I was writing that book, I would have left it out. Yeah. Maybe he put that in there. But I don't know. There's, there's a lot of details. I think that's one of the neat things about Scripture is the more you dig into it, it's like an onion. You know, it just not only does it make you cry sometimes, but it, it's just layers of, of depth, and, and we truly can't fathom it, which That's is wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. So you've been an evangelist for, we can measure it in decades now. Yeah. You've got a lot of experience. What about a maybe a favorite memory that jumps out to you of, of your work as an evangelist? Well, for about 30 years now, I've worked primarily out of Kansas City. But when I say out of, the last 20 years I've been out of the country. And they've been just very gracious. But I, I think my favorite, um, my favorite times have been those times when you're in the, you're in the village, in the bush, and you're just going from house to house. And folks are so open and receptive to just having an on-the-spot Bible study. And it doesn't have to be fancy or you know planned. You just you just have it very organic. And I love that type of, yeah. of work. Tremendous opportunity there. Yeah. yeah. And how about your your primary work is from Kansas City. Is that where you have worked always? You've worked in other places, lived other places as well? Well, when I first began to preach, I uh, was asked to go to New York for a while. So I was up in New York in Kingston for about four years. Um, but then when I came back, the congregation said, just work locally and then uh, we'll see what happens. Well, it developed into more than that. And so international then is where my focus was for a number of years. But uh, yeah, I've worked primarily in Kansas City for the last 30 years, yeah. at least from that central it's location. Been your base. Yeah. Do you have a favorite, like a memory verse maybe that is in your mind? Oh boy, again, some of the passages from Philippians I think would be, uh, uh -huh. would be great. Now, now I have to confess, I'm not great at memorizing scripture. Uh, now, I think I know a lot of scripture because I've just read them so many times, but I'm not a great memorizer. Yeah. So just to uh, have a passage just to say go and, and memorize that, I really don't. Well, Philippians is a really yeah, valuable book yeah. for you. I mean, it's a very valuable book, yeah. 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 How about a favorite apostle or apostle maybe that stands out to you in your mind? Probably Peter. You know, I mentioned this morning in the sermon that... Uh, 
when it comes to heavy theology, of course, Paul, I mean, you know, Romans and, and you know, some of those heavier books, but it's just, just as a person, I just see myself, and I see all of us in Peter. Peter made a lot of mistakes, um, he even denied Jesus, but yet Jesus restored him. And that's really what Christianity is all about. It's about that continued walk with Christ, even though we sometimes fall. Yeah. Yeah, so Peter. There's a hopefulness in this story. Isn't there? there is. Oh, there is. There is. So if a young man is thinking of setting out to become an evangelist, maybe trying to have some of the opportunities you've had, what advice would you give to him? Well, studying, obviously, is extremely important. But one of the things I caution the young men who travel with me is, you know, your job is not to be a scholar only. It's wonderful to be scholarly, but we're preachers, and we meet the needs, hopefully, of people around us in the community and the congregation. We're not in some ivory tower just <clears throat> discovering philosophy or theology. We're actually there to help others. And so, uh, you know, I like to see a young man that is reaching out, becoming friendly to all groups in a congregation, old and young, and that can uh, make, you know, make good use of his time in, in all of those areas. Yeah, developing relationships. Yes. What is your earliest memory of the Norman congregation? Well, it would probably be from the other building. Uh -huh. I mean, this is the first time I've been in this building today. Uh -huh. uh, but I did hold a meeting six years ago, yeah. I think, at the other building. Yeah. And uh, I just remember how friendly everyone was. I don't remember specifics. Uh, I do have my sermons written down somewhere <laughs> that I gave, but I, I couldn't tell you what they were. Uh, I remember that meeting. How about the kinds of things you post on social media? You mean besides like food? <laughs> besides <laughs> recipes. Yeah. Well, what I like to post on social media are, um, are poems, religious poems. Now, I don't do as much now as I did a few months ago, and I go in kind of in spells. Uh -huh. But uh, my poems I like to post because I like to write. But I also for a while did what I called uh, one sentence commentary. And I went through several books where I tried to summarize, for example, every verse of Philippians with one sentence. Oh. And that is a really ch good mm -hmm. challenge, both theologically, but also grammatically, because you've got to try to do it correctly. But it's a great way to, to just condense everything down into a, just a simple thought. Yeah. And that's the kind of things I like to post on social media. I, I don't usually share too much about my personal life. Yeah, yeah. mostly thought-provoking things. From Hopefully. Yeah. And how about your fondness for alliteration in your sermons? I do use a lot of alliterations, and sometimes it, it may seem cheesy. It may seem a little bit, may seem a little bit, uh, but but I, for me, it's it's uh, kind of a mnemonic device. It's uh, it's helpful to remember points because I don't use a lot of notes, mm. but it's also just uh, it's just fun. I think I think language itself is so interesting. Whether you're talking about Bible languages. Or just the English language and how we use words, and it's just uh, it's just kind of an exercise in um, in interest, I guess, for me. So that's probably the reason. Um, hopefully, the audience might remember more points that I'm making if they're alliterated. But again, I think you can go overboard with that too. Yeah. yeah. Well, it does make it as a listener, it makes it easier to remember as you're walking out the door the the content that you've just been able to listen. To. Well, very good. We're so happy that you're here with us this week, Mike, and we look forward to having the opportunity to learn from you as you preach from night to night. I'm looking forward to it. I want to thank the congregation and for all of you for inviting me. I appreciate it very much. Wonderful.